Hi, I'm Ivan from Webwash, and in this video, you will learn how to implement a bootstrap component, specifically the card component using paragraphs and the Radix theme, which is a bootstrap 4 theme for Drupal 8. You will learn how to create custom paragraph types and how to theme them using Twig. You will also learn how to create a Radix sub theme. And then at the end of the video, I'll show you how to use the Paragraphs Libraries module to create reusable paragraphs. So sit back and grab yourself a drink, coffee or tea or whatever you drink really and enjoy the video. So here is my stock standard Drupal 8 site, but before we jump into things, let's quickly discuss what we'll build. So what I'll do is I'll go to the Bootstrap site and then let's go to the documentation and then components and then let's click on the card components. And what we're going to do is, we are going to allow editors in Drupal to create these type of card components using paragraphs. And if I scroll down, down to card deck here on the right, you can see that Bootstrap has this concept of a card deck. It essentially allows you to group cards. Okay, and so we'll use the paragraphs module, which will have an image field, well, a media field technically, a title field and a description. And then we'll also chuck in a link field so that editors can add links at the bottom of the card. And to implement the bootstrap side of things in Drupal, we'll be using the Radix theme. So if you just search for Radix Drupal, you can see my one of my videos about it right here. If you want to learn more about Radix in particular, but if we go to the Radix project on drupal.org here, you can learn all about the Radix theme. Now Radix is a bootstrap for theme, which allows you to compile the bootstrap library locally using Webpack. And also it integrates um, with browser sync as well. And it is my go-to bootstrap theme for Drupal especially because it supports Bootstrap 4. So the two things we will focus on in this video is one, creating the paragraph types, and two is creating a Radix sub theme and then implementing the card components using Twig, okay? So let me just close these tabs. And here is my stock standard Drupal 8 site, as I already mentioned. And if I open up my terminal, Let's go ahead and download paragraphs. So to do that, just type in composer require Drupal slash paragraphs, and then give that a minute or two. Okay, now that we have paragraphs downloaded, let's jump to our site and then go to extend. And what we'll do is we will search for paragraphs and then install the paragraphs module, but we'll also search for media and install the media library. Because to handle the image, I want to use the media field as well as the media library instead of just a stock standard image field. Okay, now that everything has been finally installed, let's create the first paragraph type. But before we do that, let's just quickly look at the markup for the card component. And you can see here, okay, let me just, um, bring up the inspector and I will zoom it in so you can all see it. But if we have a look at these three cards, okay, you will see that there is a card deck div which wraps the individual cards. So what we'll have to do is we'll have to create two paragraph types. The first one will be the actual card with the, um, with the actual image, title, and description, and so on and so forth. And then the second paragraph type will be called card deck, which will just have a paragraph field with the card paragraph type. So we're gonna have two levels of paragraphs, okay? Now, this may sound tricky, but don't worry, just follow along and you'll understand why, okay? so. Let's now jump back into our, into our Drupal site. And what we'll do is go to structure, paragraph types, and we'll create the card paragraph first because that is the most complex one. 
Uh, so click on add paragraph type and let's call it card. You can call it whatever you want, but I'll just call it card. And then click on save and manage fields. And the first field we'll create is an image field. Well, technically a, a media field, but we'll call it image. So if I click on add field and then search for media under reference. Now, if you can't see the media field, make sure you install media library or the media module. And I'll just give it a label of image. And so, and so this image field will be this image right here. And then click on save field settings. And then in the reference type, uh, select image as the media type so that users can only upload images, which is very important, okay? And then click on save field settings. Again, click on add field. And this time we'll select text plane and then we'll call this one title and then click on save and continue. And then let's make it required and then click on save field settings. Another one is let's add the description field. So this will be text plain long. I don't want the editors to be able to format the text. So we'll just make it text plain long and then we'll call this one description. Did I spell that right? Yes, I did. And then last but not least, let's add the link field. Okay. And we'll call this one link, but again, you can call it whatever you want. I'll just call it link. And in the allow link text, let's make the text required and then click on save field settings. All right. So let's just quickly do a, a quick, quick comparison of things. This is how I like to do things. Let's pop this to this side. So we have the description field will be used for this bit of text. The image field will be used for the actual image. Of course, the link will be displayed below the description field and then title will of course be the card title. Okay, pretty simple. Now, let me just pop this back in because we need the space and then, and then click on manage form display. And from here, you can control the widgets of the field and you can also reorder the widgets. But let's just leave this order as it is because it actually follows the order of the fields on the card itself. So image, title, description, and link. And everything's looking good. And let's just click on manage, manage display. And, and here you can configure the look and feel of the paragraph. The only thing we'll change here is the label to hidden. And that is about it and then click on save field settings. Okay, so now let's go back to structure, content types and click on add paragraph type. And this time we'll create the card deck paragraph type. And this paragraph type is actually pretty simple because it'll just have a paragraph field. So just click on add field and then search for paragraph, and then we'll call this one cards and then click on save and continue. And let's change the allowed number of values to three. Let's just limit it down. You can, you can leave it at unlimited or you can set it to two, five, six, whatever you want, but I'll just set it to three and let's just make it, make it required. And then in the paragraph types section, make sure you check card and that's it and then click on save settings. Now the only thing we'll do here, well, let's just leave the manage form display for now and click on manage display and let's just hide the cards and that's it. Okay, so now at this point we have created our two paragraph types, card, well, let me just show you, card and card deck, okay? Now let's test out our paragraph type. And before we do that, we need to create a paragraph field on an actual content type. So let's go to structure, content types, and let's add it to the basic page. So click on manage fields and click on add field and click on add a new field and then scroll down to paragraph. 
and we'll call this one paragraphs, but you can call it components. You can call it whatever you want. Um, I've called it many things on many projects from paragraphs, components, modules, but you can call it again, whatever you want. And then let's just leave this as it is. And then if you scroll down, make sure you only select card deck as a paragraph and then click on save build settings. So now let's go to content. And oh, before we do that, let's just go back and let's change the formatter so that the label is hidden. And then now if we go to content, add content, basic page, and let's call this one, I don't know, test page. And here we can see this massive form and you can see the card deck, paragraph type, and then straight away, you can see the first card card paragraph. Of course, this isn't the actual paragraph. It's just the form to create the paragraph. So what I'll do now is I will quickly go ahead and create three cards. Okay, so now I have filled out the form for three cards. And then if we scroll all the way down and click on save, we should see these three cards. Of course, they aren't styled and they look pretty basic, but they are there, okay? So now before we jump into the whole bootstrap side of things, what I wanna do is I wanna show you how to modify the paragraphs widget because that is where a lot of the magic happens. And if you are a content editor, that is where you'll spend a lot of your time creating content. And that is playing around with these fields. Now here you can see that um, these fields are pretty big. Okay, there's a lot of content here. And at this point, I've only got about three paragraphs. Now I've worked on websites that could have 15, 20 different paragraphs. So you can imagine that once you create a bunch of paragraph fields with five or six individual fields, then this form is going to get longer and longer and longer. But luckily the paragraphs module has a pretty powerful widget where you can collapse paragraphs, um, duplicate them and also reorder them nicely. So let's take a look at that. What I'll do is I will go to structure in another tab and then go to content types and then click on a manage form display on the basic page row. And then if you scroll down to the paragraphs field, you can see two options, paragraphs classic and also paragraphs ex experimental. So click on experimental. And then if you click on the cogwheel, you will see a lot of options here. So the two useful ones are paragraph title and also plural paragraph title. So if you wanna change the branding of paragraphs, because it confuses users and you wanna change it to say components, here you can actually change the title which is used. So instead of seeing paragraph and paragraphs in Drupal's backend UI, you can actually change it to component and components. And then you can modify the different edit modes, summary modes, you can edit a whole bunch of stuff. But the most important option I wanna show you here is the edit mode. So if we select closed and then show nested, okay, and then click on update and then click on save down at the bottom. And if we go back to our edit page, now remember this form, okay? It's pretty big, it's clunky, everything's expanded. If you wanted to reorder this, you know, you really have to struggle just to uh, reorder it. I'm like twisting my fingers on my mouse to kind of move it around. It's, it's, it's a painful experience, okay? Now imagine, you had a page with like 20 paragraphs and you want to move this paragraph from the bottom all the way to the top. You know, you're going to be breaking your fingers doing it. But now if we refresh, you will see up here that this widget has changed, but, and this is important, we need to change the paragraphs widget on the card deck paragraph. Because remember, we created a paragraph field on the card deck. So now we're kind of playing this whole paragraph inception because we have, 
you know, a few levels now. Well, well, we only technically have two levels of paragraphs, but we do have a paragraph field on the content type. So it goes from the paragraphs field on the content type to the card deck to the actual then card. Anyway, so what we need to now do is jump over to structure paragraph types and then make the same change on the card deck. So if we go to card deck, click on manage form display, and then change paragraphs classic to experimental, and then change the edit mode to closed, show nested. And then if we go back here and refresh, you will see that now the UI is much nicer. So the few cool things you can do from here is, well, first of all, you can reorder things much easier, okay? Another thing you can do is if you click on, say this dots here, or this extra options button, I believe, you can duplicate it, okay? Now, the ability to duplicate, I believe, is only available in the paragraphs experimental, okay? So, so if you want the ability to duplicate, make sure you are using the experimental. Um, another cool thing you can do is also expand the cards if you want, but let me just uh, edit that so it kind of collapses everything. You can also edit all of them, okay, if you want. Um, and then you can also collapse all of them. And then another thing you can do is if you click on this option, okay, get this drag and drop. Now, this is pretty cool. You can actually move things around between the fields, okay? So you can imagine if you had a bunch of paragraphs, you know, this will make life much easier when it comes to reordering things. So if you are going to set up paragraphs on a Drupal site, I would highly recommend that you use the paragraphs experimental, but make sure you just test things out because it has the word experimental in here. So just be careful with it, you know, just give it a good test and see how it goes. And also have a play around with all of these options I could probably spend another half an hour talking about all of these options and why you would use them, but just have a play around with them as well. Okay, so I think at this point we have created, so let's go back to our test page, okay? We have created our card paragraph type, we have created our card deck, and we've also created our paragraph field on the basic page content type. Now let's go ahead and download Radix and implement this card component. So the first thing we need to do is download Radix. So open up your terminal, go to your Drupal site and type in composer require Drupal slash Radix and then give this a minute or two. Okay, so now that we have downloaded Radix, Let's go ahead and create a sub theme. Now, luckily for us, Radix has a Drush command. So what I'll do is I'll first clear this and then type in Drush Radix create. Now, if you run this, okay, you'll get this error. Now, because I've got a tutorial on using Radix, I get a lot of comments from people saying, oh, your videos don't work or your tutorial is wrong. It doesn't work, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Now, I want to finally show people how to generate a Radix sub theme. And I'll also update my older video as well. But what you need to do is you can't just run Drush Radix create. Okay, that'll be great. What you need to do is you need to um, include the path to, to the actual Radix theme. Okay, so if I was to type in Drush and then include equals themes slash contrib, uh, let me get that right, and then slash radix. Now, let me open up my text editor, well, my ID. One thing to be aware of is that you have to make sure that this path is, is perfect, okay? Because if I was to type this in, okay, what is it radix uh, create? It's still not going to work, and why is that? Because you know, you know the path is theme slash contrib slash radix, 
But if I check my path, you'll see that uh, Drupal is in a folder called web. So what I need to do is let me just clear this. So it's right up the top. What I need to do is I need to add in either web slash or I just need to go into the web directory and then I run this. And finally, you can see that the command has been found. And of course, the name argument is missing, but it is important. It is imperative because I know I'll probably get comments about this, that this path has to be relative to the path that you are in right now. So make sure you run that. Now, another thing you want to also do is enable the components module. Now, the components module comes with Radix. Radix has a dependency on the components module and it is an API level module. There's nothing to really use in the back end. Uh, all you need to do is just install it because it is how Radix manages its Twig, its Twig template. So what you want to do is just install components. And then if we go ahead and then simply run the command, and now you can see that the command has run and our sub theme has been created. So if I go into PHP Storm, you will see that here we have a custom folder and then in it, we have Radix paragraphs. Okay, this is our, this is, this is our sub theme, which we just created. And here you can see it's got, it's got like a, a yarn lock file, a package lock file, and it also comes with uh, Webpack already pre-configured. Well, it's technically Laravel Mix, which is great. And now what we need to do is jump over to our Drupal site and simply install it. So let's go to, well, let's close off a few of these browsers, uh, tabs. So let's go to appearance and then click on, scroll all the way down and you should see the sub theme, which you just created, and then click on install and set as default. And then if we go to the home page, you will see that nothing is working. Well, first of all, we need to compile bootstrap. So let's go jump back into our terminal and let's go into themes. And then what is it? Custom and then Radix. And then what we need to do is run npm install and give that a minute or two. And then run npm run and then dev. And this will compile all, all of Bootstrap and then generate a dev version of it. And so now if we go back to our site, refresh, and that is not working because chances are we need to turn off CSS and JavaScript aggregation. So let's just do that. Let's go to performance. And then if we refresh one last time, hopefully everything will be working. And Yes, you can see that bootstrap styles are coming through, but you will notice that these blocks look kind of broken. And so what we need to do now is we need to reorder the blocks and put them in specific regions. But luckily for you, I have already documented this in one of my earlier Radix tutorials. So if we search for Drupal Radix Web Wash, should be a number one result. If not, I'm doing a terrible job at writing content. And so go to this getting started with Bootstrap 4. And if I scroll down, where is it? It's um, somewhere here. Okay, go to the add blocks to the right region. And there should be a link to this section below this video. And what we need to do is we need to add all of these blocks into the correct regions. Well, the most important ones are main navigation and also user account menu. So what I'll do is let me just pop that out and pop that to the right and pop this to the left. And then let's go to structure. Let me just close that. Um, and then block layout. And what we need to do is pretty much just match up these regions and these blocks. So go ahead and do that now. So I think now all the blocks have been reordered correctly, which is great. So now let me just uh, make that 
full width. And if I go to the home page, you should see everything's looking good. And then if I resize, let me just uh, resize this to mobile. What does it look like? Where is it at the top here? You can see now that, yep, the actual menu's looking good. Perfect. Okay, so, so now at this point, we have a working sub-theme. Now let's do the fun part and implement the card using Twig. Okay, so let's take a look at our card markup. So essentially, we need to implement this. So what we have to do now is we need to add, add this class to the card deck paragraph. Now, if this is the first time you are doing any type of Drupal templating, the first thing you'll struggle with is trying to figure out which template to override. And also, where is that template? Because if you have a look at the markup, okay, let's, let's, let's take a look. Okay, there's a lot of markup here, but it really doesn't tell you where it is. Okay. And so what I want to show you now is how to turn on Twig debugging, which will tell you exactly which template is being used. So you can easily find it and override it. So to find the steps to configure Twig debugging, just search for Drupal Twig debugging. And there should be a Drupal documentation page. And what we need to do is we need to go and edit our code. So let's go to our site, go into default, and then open up settings.php and then scroll all the way down, down to the bottom and then comment out this section so that, so that it actually uses the settings.local.php. But chances are, if you are building a proper Drupal site, you should have this uncommented anyway. And then what we'll do is we'll simply copy this example.settings.local into the default directory. And then if we scroll down, you'll see this container YAMLs, which is pointing to a development version of services.yaml. So if we have a look at this development.services.yaml, now what we need to do is we need to change this parameter and switch on Twig debugging. So to do that, let's go back to this bit of documentation and just grab this bit of code. So twig.config and then debug true. And then let's just pop that in. And then we want to do drush CR. Let's just rebuild the cache. And then if everything has been set up properly, let's refresh, give it a signal too. And then if we inspect, whoa, you can straight away see all of these comments here. Okay. All of these comments. So let me make a bit of room here. If we have a look at say this comment, for example, uh, sorry, this image, for example, you can see exactly which which Twig template is being used. But more importantly, you can actually see the file name suggestions. So if you want to override, so I will double click on this. You can have a look at the file name suggestions. And this allows you to specify certain Twig templates on specific fields, depending on the file name suggestion. So essentially what we need to do now is we need to find the card deck paragraph, which is right here, and then add in the class card deck. That's, that's essentially what we need to do. So we have two options, okay? We could override this template and then give it a file name of um, paragraph dash dash card so that the template only gets loaded up for, for the card deck paragraph. But that's a bit of an overkill to, to simply add a class. Luckily, we can use a preprocessor for that. Okay, Drupal allows us to do that. Now, a preprocessor is a function which gets called before variables are passed to the Twig template. 
and it just saves you from having to override a tweak template, but you need to manage and maintain a bit of code, but the code is very simple, okay? So what I'll do is open up PHP Storm and then go to themes. Let me just close all of this stuff. Da, da, da. Go to themes, radix, open up radix underscore paragraphs dot themes, and then type in function and then radix paragraphs. You can see that P uh, PHP Storm does a whole bunch of stuff here. What I want to do is get this one and then in the hook type in paragraph double underscores, then card deck. Okay. So this means that we are adding in a preprocessor for the paragraph template, but only if the paragraph is a card deck paragraph type. And then here, all we need to do is add in, so variables and then attributes, then class, and then card deck. So this will add in a class to the wrapping div around it, because if we open up paragraphs, you will see, and so this is the template that we are pre-processing. You can see that attributes is getting added, okay? So if you compare it, this is the attributes variable gets passed to here. So now, if everything is working, so let me just double check this. So that means that on the card deck paragraph type, which is very important because this template is used across all of the paragraph types, only on the card deck, we will add this class called card deck to the attributes, to the attributes variable or array, which, is, which then gets added to this div, okay? So now, if we save that and then do drush CR and then jump into here and do a refresh. Of course, we're not going to see anything groundbreaking straight away, but we should see. And then here you can see that the card deck class has been added. Okay. So now we need to work on the card component. Okay, so if we jump into the bootstrap documentation, you will see that there is a bit of bit of markup which needs to be created. So for this, we'll actually override the paragraph template because it makes perfect sense to actually do that. So let's jump over to PHP Storm. And what we'll do, well, let's have a look at the markup first. And if we have a look at the card, uh, let me make a bit of room here. You can see card deck. Yep, that's fine. Then you have the individual items and then you have the actual card itself. So what we, we want to do is we want to add in, so let, let's just actually test it out now. Let's add in card. You can see that the card stuff is getting added. Okay, well, it's kind of getting added. still needs to be fixed up. Um, but we also have a whole bunch of markup which we need to clean up, which we'll do in a second. But what I want to do is I want to change all of this markup so that it matches kind of, it doesn't have to match perfectly, but so, so that it kind of matches this markup, okay? So we have card body, card title, card text, so on and so forth. And that's the thing about Drupal, okay? Drupal loves to generate markup. Um, you know, if you use panels in Drupal 7, then I'm sure you're aware of the div wrapper, you know, issue where it's like five or six, wrapping divs and all that. But, you know, things are better in Drupal 8 thanks to Twig. But, you know, Drupal likes to generate a lot of markup. So what we want to do now is override this paragraph template on the card paragraph type. So what we're going to do is we are going to copy. So I'll just copy this template. So just copy it. Well, I'll copy the whole thing. And then go into templates in the sub theme 
and I will just create another folder called paragraphs and then I'll paste in, I'll paste it in, but make sure you give it a name, okay, dash dash card, okay? So this card is the machine name of the paragraph type. So that Drupal only uses this template for the card paragraph type. And then if we scroll down, okay, the first thing we need to do is add in the card class, okay? Simple, simple. Now, the next thing we need to do is put in the image title description and also I think the link, yes. So now we are going to roll our sleeves up and write a bit of a twig. So the first thing we wanna do is add in the image, okay? So the image will, will, will actually stay. If we have a look at the, the card, you will see that image is just below the card div. And then everything else is pretty much in the card body div. So if we come back to PHP Storm, let's put in the content dots and then field image, okay? This is the actual image. And then if we type in, let's create another div, sorry, uh, called card body. And then in here, we want to add in the, what is it? Let's have a quick look. Well, let's just pop this to the side. So I've got it here and let's pop this to the side, okay? So what I want to do now is do an H5. So that is, um, what is it? H5 and then dot card title. And this will then be content field title. And then the next one is, oh, sorry, it's a P tag and then card text. And then again, let me just copy this so I don't have to type it is this will be field description. And then let's move the content over into the card body. But one thing to be aware of is that right now, this content variable will display the field, the field image, the field title, and the field description here, as well as through here. So what we need to do is we need to tell Twig not to load up the fields, sorry, not to display the fields, which we have manually displayed above. So without, and then that would be field title, field description, and then what is that? Field, oh, sorry, field title. And then any other field will simply be rendered out through this content variable. Okay, so so far so good. Let's just uh, let's just close that off. Let's open this up. Let's hope this all works. Let's jump over here and run, you know, Drush CR. Now you can actually turn off caching, but that really slows things down. So you don't have to run Drush CR all the time. But let's just hit refresh and see what happens. This is the moment of truth. Okay, so first of all, we can see that okay, the cards are kind of looking like cards, but they're not floating correctly. It's kind of like double. Yeah, it's not actually displayed twice. Why is that? And this is kind of the fun part of debugging things. So let's have a quick look. So we can see here, card image, da, 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 da. So if I take a look at, okay, let's, first of all, let's figure out if our template has actually loaded up. Okay, uh, that's the first thing. Oh, this is so annoying. Well, let me pop it to the left. Ah, oh, that's better. All right, let's just close this off. There's not much space here, is there? So what I wanted to find out is why the hell is this not loading up properly? All right, let's take a look at our markup. So PPP, okay, so content without field title, oh, image. All right, that's going to stop image from displaying 10 times. All right, now we're getting somewhere. All right, all right, all right. Okay, let's now take a look at this. This is coming along nicely. Uh, you can see that if we scroll up, 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 card image, paragraph type, where, what am I looking at? Okay, 
So we have card image, perfect. Then we have our actual cards and then we have the image down, uh, sorry, the, the link down at the bottom, okay? So everything's coming along nicely, but it's still not, let's just pop this back down. If we have a look, and let me just zoom out a little bit. It's not, it's not floating correctly. Why is that? Now, if we jump back to Bootstrap, you will see that you have card deck and then straight away below it, you have card. And then each card is straight away below card deck. But if you have a look here, Drupal being Drupal, of course it has to, it generates a bunch of markup before it gets to the actual card. So we have card deck here, but then it's got this card deck fields, field item, so on and so forth, okay? So what we now need to do is we need to override this field template. But one thing to be aware of is that this field template, so this field.html.twig gets used on every single field. So it's used here. If we scroll down, it's used um, here, okay? We can't just go in there and override the general field twig template because it's used absolutely everywhere. But luckily for us, we can override the field template, which is just used for the card deck field, okay? Well, well, the cards paragraph field on the card deck. We can override just that twig template. So what we'll do is let's go to, well, let's first of all find the template because one little tricky thing to note is that, let's say with paragraphs, okay? Where is it? All right, paragraphs. You will see that, yes, this paragraphs is getting loaded up out of our template, but originally it was coming out of the paragraphs module. But if you have a look at the field, so where is it? It's here. You will see that the field is actually coming out of the Radix base theme because, because the Radix base theme, which our sub theme uses, is overriding the field, the field template. So what we need to do now is we need to go to Radix templates field and then simply copy the field.html.twig and then paste that into the, the fields folder in our sub theme and make sure, very important, that you change the file name to paragraph dash dash field dash cards and then hit refactor. And what we're going to do here is we essentially need to remove all the markup from here. Now, if I was implementing this on a proper website, I'd probably spend a bit more time with the markup, especially um, because if you have a look here, there's a lot of if statements. If you are displaying a label, if you're not displaying a label like hidden label, if the field has multiple values or if it has one. Now, luckily for us in this case, I know that this field, okay, will never change. So what I can do is I can go for the full nuclear approach when it comes to cleaning up markup and then literally just deleting it and pretty much pasting in this little bit, okay? So this is simply a, a for loop which loops through the content and that's it. So this will take away all the divs between card deck and card. So let me just save that. And then if I run Drush CR, it should. This is the moment of truth. Dun, dun, dun. It should now pop up nicely in columns. Hey, there we go. Perfect. I should, I should have a little laugh track. Oh no, an applause track. So now if we have a look, you can see that we have our, where is it? Our card. Yes, perfect. But then more, most importantly, below card deck, which is above here, we have our cards directly. Now, sometimes you may want to turn off this actual twig debugging because it can get in the way, especially if you want to try and figure out wait, you know, which divs are where because it can it can sometimes be hard to figure out 
you know, how many divs there are because there's so many, so many comments. So you may want to turn it off, but for us right now, it makes perfect sense to have it displayed. But here you can see that, yes, we have the card deck and straight away we have the card. Okay, so I think that is it. And if we have a look at our markup, yes, we haven't implemented this type of stuff, but you can go ahead and implement this yourself if you really, really want to. But if you want to have a look at the kitchen sink, as this example shows, you can chuck in a lot of stuff. So you could probably create another list field that can easily list out, you know, items or something. You know, there is a ton of stuff you can do. And the best thing about it is that with paragraphs and radix, an editor can come in, modify this, and then click on click uh, click on edit, make changes, hit save, and create this card component. Okay, so now that we we are at the tail end of this video, uh, that's pretty much it for using radix and creating the card component. So if you want to finish off now, you can. But one thing I do want to show is how to use the paragraphs library. Because one thing you might notice with paragraphs is that over time, if you were to use paragraphs on a large website, you will have a lot of pages and then you would have a lot of paragraphs. Now, can you reuse paragraph components? Because when you start using paragraphs, you really start thinking about creating reusable components for your editors. Now, a couple of years ago, you really couldn't reuse paragraphs. You couldn't create like a paragraphs library where your editors can just copy paragraphs and then, and then just attach the paragraph to multiple pages. But luckily now there is a submodule called, hence the name paragraph library, which allows you to create reusable paragraph entities, which you can then add to multiple pages. And this is huge. I mean, I remember a couple of years ago, editors asking for this stuff. So setting it up is actually relatively simple. You can set it up in about five minutes. And that's what I want to show you right now. So let me just close these tabs. And then if I go to extend and then search for paragraph, and then of course, just install paragraph library. But before you install it, that's right, I forgot, there is a module we need to download. So that is Drupal Entity Usage. So go ahead and download this module. It is, uh, oh, the, oh, it is a beta three, which is great. Essentially, it tracks the usage of an entity used in all of these field types. Anyway, we're not gonna really cover this module, but just go ahead and download it. So what I'll do is I'll just copy that um, machine name of the project and then type in, well, I need to go back. Just give me one second, go back to composer, one more, and then just type in composer require Drupal slash entity usage. Okay, so now that we have downloaded entity usage, let's go back to extend page. And then if we search for paragraph, paragraphs, ugh, can't spell. And then, okay, we can install paragraphs library and then just click on install. So now go to content and then paragraphs. And then here you can see all of the available paragraph items, but we don't have any. So the, so the first thing you want to do is click on add, add library item and then give it a label. So let's call this footer cards, but you can call it whatever you want. Okay. And then here you can select all of your paragraph types. So for us, we'll just call it add. So we'll just click on add card deck and let me just quickly create another paragraph, sorry, card paragraph. I'll call this one footer one and then link. And let's just leave it as it is. Can't be bothered creating another card. And then as you create your library, they will appear all here, okay? Now, to add this paragraph type to a page, what we need to do is we first of all need to modify the basic page because if we come here, okay, let's just edit our basic page. You will see that we can only add a card deck. We cannot add in, add in any other paragraphs. So what we need to do is go to structure, content types, 
and then click on manage fields on basic page, edit the paragraphs field, and then make sure you check from library. So from library is kind of like a pseudo paragraph type, which allows you to reference other paragraph types. I've probably said paragraph 10,000 times in this video, but that's what it essentially does. So click on save settings. And then if we go back to our page and we can see, see uh, the, the add from library, we can select it and then we can enter in the label, which is footer cards. And then we click on save. And then you can see that our footer card has been added in. Of course, you know, the, the padding between the paragraphs can be fixed up and the image style for this card three can go four width, whatever. Now, the last thing I'll show you, I promise you the last thing I'll show you is if we go to content and then paragraphs, you will see this used column, okay? And then if you click on it, it'll tell you which field it's attached to. But if I was to edit, well, let me just open this up in another tab. Oh, sorry, on the left, let's close all this so that it's more interactive. I still have just one page, okay? The test page. If I come here, click on edit, and then I scroll down and click on save, and then hit refresh, you will see that the used column goes up. It says now two, okay? And if I was to click on save again on the same page, what do you think will happen? Again, refresh. And now it says three, okay? Now, one thing to be aware of, because I'm certain I'll get comments about this, is that this value in the used column tells you how many revisions this paragraph is attached to, not the pages. Entity usage when it comes to tracking paragraphs, it doesn't really care the page that it's on, okay? It will only track the amount of revisions which the paragraph is attached to. But then if you actually click on the number, you should then see exactly which field it is part of. And then if you click on it, it takes you to the actual node, okay? So you can easily figure out which page it's on, but if you look at this, Number, this might seem a bit confusing, especially if you create a paragraph type and you're like, oh, wait a minute, I've only added it to one field or, or you know, one, one page, why does this keep going? And if you add a paragraph type to say the homepage and you're editing that every few months, it's gonna slowly add up. And so, yeah, you might get confused by that. So anyway, so that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have learned a lot because we have covered a lot in this video from creating paragraph types to learning about the different paragraph widgets, to implementing bootstrap components using Radix, overriding templates, creating a sub-theme in Radix, and finally learning about paragraph libraries. So if you want to learn more about Drupal, head over to webwash.net and also don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And also, if you want to check out our free courses, just head over to webwash.net. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time.